Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome back to From the Depths, the ongoing AI tutorial series of things. Now we're back discussing the AI again today and hopefully this video should be a little bit shorter than the last one because uh, this next uh, tab of the AI tab is a little bit, I was about to say less complicated, but in more accurate description would be uh, there's less stuff to go over. So, what are we doing today? Well, uh, looking at this, uh, uh, the same kind of uh, hull that we were talking about last time to do with AI behaviors, today we're talking about AI adjustments, which as the name entails is how you adjust uh, certain things that your craft does. And that is primarily altitude and pathfinding. So, if we plonk a mainframe down here and we hit Q, Here's the behavior tab, that's sort of something we already discussed. The adjustment tabs is this, so as the say, as uh, the screen implies, it adjusts the waypoints, so the pathfinding and all that. So behaviors pass waypoints to maneuver routines. This common pack of settings allows you to adjust these waypoints in a way specific to your vehicle. Examples include pathfinding cross oceans, avoiding land and other boats, pathfinding over land, avoiding oceans and other tanks, Maintaining a certain altitude above the waves of land, maintaining a certain depth under the ocean. So, the behavior determines how your craft moves, how it behaves. Maneuver determines what exactly it uses uh, to move. Adjustments is the thing between them. This is how the behavior uh, talks to the maneuver. And there's multiple settings with that, and we're going to uh, look at them right now. So. Uh, first off, you have the type. So, unset just gathers fresh defaults. A type has not been set. When unset, the behaviors and maneuver routines will automatically populate new defaults. So, if you set this, it will select uh, one of the other three, uh, depending on what your craft is uh, doing. So, this is this is kind of what you select if you're not sure what you want. And usually, it's pretty straightforward to pick one because it depends on what your craft is. So, starting off uh, from uh, from the top, on water, pathfind oceans, avoid other ships. Uh, that is uh, basically what you'd, well, it's what you'd have for a ship. So I don't need to do that. I just remembered. Just wrote a comment earlier today. So if we go here, we go to adjustments. This thing is set to air. And uh, so if we go to water, the thing, you'll notice the thing hasn't changed much anyway, but setting in water... And, uh, hold on. Moving out. Okay. It, you do also have to mess with this, uh, these settings up here. But if I do that, you'll see it does that. And even if I change that, I think what will happen is this. So, if you're wondering about uh, how to get the path uh, showing, uh, middle mouse button, click this. And if we look at the path over there, uh, the it is set to water, and so you'll see that the actual uh, path this uh, craft is taking is avoiding land. It's sticking uh, to uh, the water and is adjusting so it does not actually go onto the land, which is fair enough, except this thing can fly. So if we do this now, go to adjustments, and we set it to air, You'll now notice that uh, the path is different. It is going to sail uh, straight over the land. So eventually, uh, when it gets in, really should have spawned this guy uh, close to the land, shouldn't I? Oh uh, well, Listening. we can do magic. Moving out. So we are here. Listening. Moving out. Setting it to air means that uh, it sticks to the land. Well, no, it can go over anywhere it likes. And if you change that, so if we go here, so air, go straight over the land, adjustments, set that to water, you'll see that now that path is avoiding land completely. Uh, in contrast, see you can't even order them onto land. That was a, a bit of a problem I used to have uh, with uh, my aircraft that were actually running off a naval AI. So, we go... where was it? Here it is. Now, if we change that to land, 
That is the revert. well, as you can probably guess, it is the reverse of uh, water. It'll try and get out of the water wherever possible and stick to land. So if we go here and we want to get, say, let's go Moving out. here and then Moving out. here. Listening. Let's speed this up a little bit. back here let's see this so you'll notice that it's following the land it is trying to stay away from water whenever possible and is not actually going to uh, cross water unless Listening. it has to Moving out. the path doesn't extend all the way over there Moving out. let's go here so we go here So you see, stick into the land, stick into the land, stick into the land, except way over here when it uh, actually has no choice but to cross uh, this stretch of water. In fact, it's going to have uh, a bit of trouble uh, crossing this. So if we, once again, fast forward time, I'm so glad I remember that this is an option. So it still can uh, go over water, it just really prefers not to. So that's basically the trick uh, with this first bit. It's setting what kind of vehicle uh, it is, whether it's on land, whether it's on air, or whether it's in the water, right? So moving on from that, uh, collision avoidance. Uh, this is also reasonably straightforward. Uh, it has three settings, avoid all vehicles, which... Uh, as you can probably guess, means that it'll try and pathfind so it doesn't run into any vehicle, be it friendly or non. Uh, then you have avoid friendly vehicles, which means it'll stop. It'll try to avoid running into friendly vehicles, but it'll uh, happily run into uh, unfriendly ones. This is the setting you want, by the way, just in case you're wondering how that's ever useful. That is the setting you want for a ramming craft, or say a capturing craft, something that... Uh, really doesn't even care and just uh, is quite happy to uh, rub up against uh, enemy vehicles. And collision avoidance off is... I'm not entirely sure why you'd ever want this, uh, but it basically means it won't bother trying to avoid any vehicle at all. And I personally cannot imagine reasons for that, but uh, presumably there is some reason uh, you would want to do that. Perhaps uh, you... Uh, have something that's mounted on... A l I know I just said I couldn't imagine something, but here I am imagining something. Uh, perhaps you have a drone that's uh, on a carrier that uh, flies off the carrier, and if you have collision avoidance on, it flies in a weird way. But if you turn it off, uh, it'll just happily bounce off the carrier and then away it goes. You could even perhaps uh, have an ACB changer, which AI is in control of it, afterwards so it can turn it back on again. So. That's collision avoidance. Then we have altitude. So this is um, something you need to use. So where is our friend here? All right. So this guy, uh, for the sake of everybody who uh, hates the fact that the Minecraft bounce around all the time, uh, this thing does have PID control. So it's currently got roll and pitch, just so we don't all get sick. But the altitude is being controlled uh, purely by the AI. Like, there's nothing else controlling except the AI itself. Uh, whoops, that wasn't right. So, we're in here, and the altitude is set to this. So, these are... This is the bit where you determine how high your craft flies. And if you're only using the AI, the AI and no PIDs to control uh, the altitude, and no ACBs, no breadboards, no anything, this is where you would do it. So... We've got our minimum altitude above the land is 300 meters, minimum altitude above the water is also 300 meters, and the max altitude is 350, so it'll try and stay uh, above uh, 300 meters and below 350 for both land and water. You can change this uh, around as much as you like. In fact, it describes everything. Waypoints are converted to ocean slash terrain height due to surface pathfinding. Waypoints then have their altitude limit to 350 meters. Following this, they are adjusted so they're at least 300 meters above land, and then finally adjusted so they're 300 meters above the way level. Right, so that is description of how the waypoints are given. And to change that, well, as you can probably guess, 
It's extremely simple. You change the numbers. So min altitude of land is 300. Maybe I want to change it to that. And will that ruin everything? No, it won't. So if I now send uh, this fella over the water, Warm up and fly with fleet moving out. we can do this. Whoops. So once they're over the water, we should probably see a decrease in altitude. Yep. Or rather, we should see it now, except we're not. Oh well. Lifting. Lifting. Form up. Moving out. Fly with fleet. Interesting. Now we are, because I didn't specify what height it was to fly at. Let's see if it stops uh, where I wanted to. There we go, there we go, 200. And it stopped at 200. No, wait, it hasn't. And by the way, I'm not going to turn off its movement uh, right now, because uh, uh, that'll turn off uh, the jets actually keeping it in the air. It's not actually wanted to go where uh, I wanted to. And in case you're wondering, uh, this is why the adjustments uh, page is your first resort uh, rather than your last one. Or rather, like, you get better results if you just skip straight ahead uh, to a PID or to an ACB or breadboard or whatever. Something like that. So lastly, uh, not quite lastly actually, uh, you've got terrain height prediction time. All this is is that the time is used to estimate the terrain height in the future. Well, if you set this to two seconds, it'll probe the terrain height under the vehicle two seconds in the future and use this to adjust the waypoint altitude to avoid hitting the terrain. I am not sure why you would ever set this uh, to less than 10 seconds. Because if you set it too low, I can clearly see that uh, your craft will run into terrain a lot more. It's a little bit like... Like, honestly, like when in doubt, set this to 10 seconds. Like, pretty much always, no matter what uh, craft you're building, because, like, you, it's like when you're, it's like if you're driving a car, uh, the rule of thumb uh, with driving, for those of you who don't drive, is to uh, look two seconds ahead, because, um, and stay uh, two seconds traveling, to, uh, traveling distance uh, behind the car in front of you. The reason for that is it gives you time to either slow down or change direction should the person in front of you have to stop suddenly. Same principle here, if you um, don't give yourself enough time and don't give yourself enough room ahead, uh, you will crash into the person in front of you and then you are going to have to talk to your insurance company afterwards. Uh, assuming you have an insurance company, which I hope you do if you're driving, because driving can be rough. But, in any case, so that's the train height prediction time. So, there's one last thing to talk about, and you would have seen that uh, a little bit earlier. And that is, if you use the on water or on land function, uh, the there's an extra bit that pops up here. And this is the minimum uh, water depth required. Uh, turning circle, allow upwind pathfinding, and allow reverse. Uh, the land is a little bit different, uh, because what this is now is uh, the h land height required. So this is what you kind of will want to do if you want uh, amphibious vehicles and want to set what they do. So this, in this particular case, uh, if you're making a ship and you want to ensure, if your ship has a lot of its hull underneath the water and you don't want it scraping on uh, underwater terrain, you must set this. So this thing is set to 30 water uh, meters water depth required. Uh, this thing flies, so we can do uh, the opposite, minus 50 uh, water depth required, which means if you set this into negative, you'll be able to travel up onto the shore. So I can uh, this thing can now happily travel onto uh, land that's 50 meters tall, which is quite tall, actually. That's quite handy. And the turning circle is the circle which it um, uh, the thing can turn. I actually don't mess with this much, so the more accurate this estimate is, the more accurate the pathfinding will be. So a smaller vehicle generally needs a smaller turning circle, and also a shorter vehicle needs a... A smaller turning circle. If you are like me and you make very long craft uh, and also large craft, you will need to bump this up a little bit. And if you're having trouble with the pathfinding uh, of your craft, 
uh, you're going to want to mess with this. Sometimes you can just add uh, more turning force, more rudders, more turning thrusters, more turning props. But uh, it is a good idea just to mess with this. Uh, not too much because you can get stuck in an infinite loop of turning. And you'll and uh, also worth noting is that uh, air doesn't have that option, which is uh, one of the reasons why uh, for aircraft, uh, it like you're basically stuck using uh, just basically getting the perfect uh, turning thruster or like turning uh, turning rudder uh, ratio right. But uh, for this, uh, the, you can have this extra step to play with. And upwind pathfinding, and uh, it, this is only something you need to worry about if you want to use sails, which, uh, confession time, I've never made a sailboat in From the Depths. It's just something that's never occurred to me. I should work on that. But you only uncheck this box uh, if your vehicle relies heavily on using sails to move. Uh, if you don't have sails on your craft, you can ignore that and you just uh, leave that checked. Because this allows your craft to uh, pathfind um, upwind. So, like, moving into the wind, rather than having the wind behind it. And last but not least is allow reverse. This is something that 9 times out of 10, I... Well, let's be honest, 99 times out of 100, I uncheck this box. Uh, because uh, reverse is a bit of a mixed blessing in From the Deaths, particularly for ships. Um... Simply because, particularly if you're using something like a broadside angle, uh, what tends to happen if you have reverse enabled is that the thing will start moving, get into its broadside, and then in order to maintain its broadside, it'll kind of shimmy back and forth uh, in place. So it'll constantly go forward and reverse, and essentially just stay in the same spot, which is generally, I find, a bad thing, because... Uh, you need to be constantly moving in order to dodge whatever's coming your way. Usually shells, and quite often cram shells and stuff like that. And uh, if you stay in one place, you are considerably easier to hit uh, for every single kind of weapon in the game. Be it uh, missiles, be it APS shells, be it cram shells, be it even hit scan weapons like uh, lasers and particle cannons. Because uh, the detection systems don't need to update um, with new information. The old, old information still stays relevant and they can hit you. So I tend to uncheck this and uh, you pretty much only want this if you actually uh, need your craft to reverse. Say if you uh, use... The, where is it? This behavior right here. If I want to make a front sider it is helpful for the thing to constantly move back and forth in order to stay at the correct distance and in order to keep his nose pointed at the target. Okay? Okay. So, here we have all this stuff. What else? What else? That's actually it. <laughs> That's basically everything. Cool. So, that is pretty much all there is to say about uh, the Adjustments tab. As I said before, it's, uh, it's uh, wrong to say it's simple because you can spend a long time in there just messing about uh, with various uh, functions to get your craft working the way you actually want it to work. But it is, a little bit, it is a little bit more straightforward than the Behaviors tab, and the choices are more straightforward and less confusing. So, I hope you're having a good time with that. So next time, uh, what we'll be doing is talking about Additional, which is... Uh, well, no, we'll be talking about Maneuver, sorry. Which I have, which I do know something about, which makes that a lot easier. I'm rambling now, we should stop. So... Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon if you like. It really helps. Thank you to all my current Patreon supporters. And I will see you next time in From the Depths. Farewell.